Welcome everybody to another episode of LFM TV. Today we have an amazing guest. His name is John Hadity. He actually have over 20 years of studio experience and he is now the VP of EP Final Solution. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Great. Um, can you elaborate more about your experience and how did you actually work in now with EP Financial Solution? Sure. So I was a studio executive for 20 some years and um, spent more than half of that time as a finance executive and, um, and helped finance projects, get them off the ground and then worked with producers to make sure that, um, that their projects got completed and delivered and using all different kinds of financing. So it's not like the, the studios would use all of their own cash to finance these films. So in the course of my work, I learned a lot about so what we call soft money, which is um, things like tax incentives and rebates and grants. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I built a, a little business around it and then was invited several years later to join Entertainment Partners and uh, run a tax credit financing business for them. And <coughs> we I'll t uh, let me tell you a little bit about Entertainment Partners. Okay. So most people are familiar with EP um, because it's a payroll company, mm -hmm. right? And yes. so, and, and we're the largest payroll company and handle more cast and crew payroll than anybody else. And um, have been doing it for almost 40 years. And wow. um, they started helping their clients in the tax incentive space as a kind of a value add, you know, and you know, now with all of these tax credits all over the world, you know, producers sometimes need help navigating those waters. Yeah. Um, some, some of them are complicated, some of them aren't. Um, you know, there are lots of different kinds of credits you can chase, there's a tax credit. There are rebates. There are grants. There are when you talk about, I'm I'm sorry that sure. I caught you. When you talk about rebates, what is that? Well, there's you know different states and different different countries structure their incentives differently. All right. Uh, I mean, there are just a, you know a finite number of kinds of of incentives, mm -hmm. but they they f usually follow one of four different. Um, uh, programs. W there's either a, tr a refundable tax credit like New York, mm -hmm. there's a transferable credit like they have in Georgia, and, and the difference between the two is that on a refundable credit you, um, you spend all your money and you audit the expenses and you send in the audit report to the government and then you file a tax return. And if you don't owe any tax in the state, then the state sends you a check back um, for a, a refund, as it were, just like on your personal taxes, right? Mm -hmm. when, you, when you've overpaid on taxes, you get a check back, right, if you do a refund. Well, th these incentives work the same way in states like New York, where there are refundable credits. In states like Georgia, where it's a transferable credit, if you don't owe any tax to the state, then the state doesn't send you a check. So the only way you can actually get the money, for at least for wow. the amount of the credit that you've earned, you need to sell the credit to somebody that does owe tax oh, okay. in the state. And we've actually built a pretty healthy business around finding buyers for producers that have credits to sell. So, so, that's, that's, so that's two of them. And then rebates are you know, they work just like rebates for anything else. You know, you prove that you spent the money, and if a state is offering a rebate, then they send you a rebate check, right? And then there are grants. So there are some mm -hmm. states that actually, um, usually you have to pre-apply, mm -hmm. right? And But the grant is conditioned among, uh, among a number of things. Yeah. Um, they, they probably are very interested in the story you're telling and is it going to promote the state or the jurisdiction that you're working in. Um, they probably want to see that you're going to spend a, at least a minimum amount of money on the ground in the state. So we ha have built up this business 
in helping producers navigate all of that, right? Um, and we have also added to the services that we provide um, tax credit administration work, which is actually doing the paperwork. Great, right? the best part. Yes, it's <laughs> the best part. Because you know producers know how to produce, right? Yeah. They know how to make movies. Directors know how to direct. Yeah. Actors know how to act. But, but there aren't as many people that know how to fill out these forms and what to say to the government mm -hmm. to ensure them that yeah. the production has done everything properly in order to qualify for these incentives. So we do that for them. There is any other services that EP Finance Solutions? Financial Solutions? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we're a bank, too. We lend money. All right. So, you know, if we're, if we're doing all that, if we're helping producers um, manage their credits, right, manage the, the qualified expenditure, and if we're um, making sure that you're not missing anything that could count toward the credit, and if we're finding you a buyer for a transferable credit, you know, we're doing all this stuff to help our payroll clients maximize the credit. And we, you know, we're kind of saying, well, look, we, we have our fingerprints all over this. So you're going to get the credit we tell you you're going to get. We learned early on that we could lend the producers money against that credit because we're managing the whole process for them. So you know, we're, we're actually betting on ourselves, mm -hmm. right? We're saying, we know how to do this better than anybody else. Mm -hmm. We can take the risk and we can lend producers money and we'll get paid back when the incentive comes back. When you talk about loan, do you talk about angel, angel investor or just a loan? No, so, so this is not equity, this okay. is a loan. Just a loan. Just a loan and the collateral that we use for the loan is the tax credit. All right. right, or the rebate or the grant. So, and that's a good thing. That's, that's a really good thing for producers because we're not taking rights. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not taking distribution rights. We're not taking territories. And th you know, th th there's a value to that, right? There's a value to the credit. There's a value to territories. Every territory is worth something. You know, the Spanish speaking markets are mm -hmm. valuable. Um, Asian markets are valuable, mm -hmm. European markets are valuable, so when you're selling the movie around the world, each territory is worth something, right? And you can use that as collateral if you need financing. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't, we don't lend against unsold territories. So there are companies out there that do, but we will lend against sold territories. So, for instance, if you're a producer and you were lucky enough to sell your movie at any point in time, you know, whether it's before you started production or when you're in production, sometimes, um, sometimes producers will show, um, uh, you know, some, some um, early footage to distributors to see if they can generate some interest in the project. And if they like the cast and they like the director and they like what they are seeing, in this rough assembly, sometimes distributors will will make a preemptive strike and buy that territory to take mm -hmm. it off the market. Depending on who that distributor is, I might lend you the money to use for production um, up front. For example, Netflix or yeah, Netflix, HBO. Amazon, HBO, Hulu. Um, any of the major distributors. So. Um, Focus Features, Sony Classics, mm -hmm. um, Fox Universal. Searchlight, you know, all these companies are, they're great companies and they, if they make an agreement with a producer, then, you know, we, there's very little risk that, that they're not going to pay when you deliver the movie to them. Mm -hmm. So we support them and we support that, that negotiation and we support that contract and, and we will stand behind that paper and lend money to the producer. So it will be good for the for the producer to actually reach out the company in the beginning. To reach oh. out to EP. Yes. Yeah, always. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we're we're uh, like in pre-production or mm -hmm. between pre-production and planning. Yeah. And then that that way it will get more. Well, you get there, more there's help. certainly lots of benefits you get. You know, we we're a 
we really offer this whole menu of production solutions mm -hmm. for a bunch of stuff, you know, not for, 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 first of all, for payroll, right, most yeah. importantly, because you don't want to, you don't want to manage that yourself, right? Mm -hmm. You want a payroll company, and there are, I could give you a list of 100 plus things that a payroll company does that a producer doesn't know how to do, but a payroll company is expert at it. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of tax reporting that has to be done to the government, um, but also uh, on behalf of the employee, but also the employer. Um, there's insurance stuff that has to happen. There's workers' compensation mm -hmm. that needs to be handled. Um, you know, just one person getting hurt on a movie set yeah. is enough to set, time-wise, it's enough to set a producer back um, for days, if not weeks, managing that process because there, the law says there are lots of things you have to do when somebody gets hurt, right? And because you're the employer. Yeah. Um, if you have a proper payroll company handling the engagement of cast and crew, then you don't have to worry about it. You let the payroll company take care of all that, you know? All the paperwork. All of it. Make sure that everybody signed mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah, and now, you know, especially in these days, right, where, where you know, our own government is being so um, um, vigilant over who are you hiring mm -hmm. and do they have proper paperwork, that's the, you know, you can, ha the payroll company can ensure that you are not putting yourself at risk or you're not exposing yourself in any way that might interrupt the process of getting your project made, right? Um, so, so there are lots of production solutions a payroll company can give you. We also own Movie Magic budgeting and Movie Magic oh, scheduling. Great. I actually use it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> look, it's the, too. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the it's industry amazing. standard. Yeah, right? it is. I mean, Definitely. that's the it's the industry standard. Every pro yes. uses it, right? Yeah. Um, and you know, we offer courses and. Mm. in cost reporting and we offer courses in in how to use movie magic yeah um, which yeah. is yeah which is great it's great I, I actually use it for my short film I think oh, it's great. great yeah yeah because it you know it's help you to have everything together in one place yep it yeah. does um, we we also own central casting yeah so. I was gonna ask you about that because I actually saw that on the website and I yeah. was like tell me more about it S well, Central Casting has been around for over 90 years, mm -hmm. you know, and everybody knows the name Central Casting. Yes. Um, it is a company that hires and pays extras, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, some movies need, have scenes with thousands of extras in them, right? Yeah. Um, and the team at Central Casting will work with the director and work with the AD and work with the production manager to get those people for those big scenes. and it, it, maybe it's one person, maybe it's two people, yeah. maybe it's a thousand, but they can do it. They can handle it, and um, it, it's a great operation. It's a great team of people, um, and it, you know the the fact that the company's been around for ninety years really speaks for itself. Nice, right? Um, how how does the the finding the resources? How is it going? Is it take one month? Is it depends on the producer, depends on the project? Well, uh, you know, it's, it's, so every project is different. Yeah. Right? And we help productions with their production planning. So, okay, so great. we, you know, we, that's why we say, you know, co if you contact us earlier than later, uh, you'll, there'll be more opportunity for you, mm -hmm. right? So oftentimes we help our payroll clients with figuring out where they should film, you know, s you know, okay. people, People, uh, tr you know, uh, immediately think, oh, I'll go to Georgia because everybody else is going to Georgia. And then they, they may find that there's a lack of available crew because Georgia is really busy. So while we still want to encourage people to, to go to a jurisdiction that suits their project the best, you know, we can offer some suggestions. You know, we can recommend nice. other places that, that might work too. Um, we, you know, we, we, uh, Georgia's a great example, actually, when you talk about a package, because Georgia does have a great 
state credit, mm -hmm. but there's also a Savannah credit, right? So people go to Georgia, and they, not always, but I would say sometimes people think naturally, oh, Atlanta. Oh, yeah. Right? But, I heard a lot. <laughs> right? But, but actually, you know, if you go to Savannah, You'll have more you incentive? Get, or well, you get the Savannah credit, right, mm -hmm. which, which I think caps out at $150,000 per project. Um, but you get that on top of the Atlanta or the Georgia credit, right? Oh, wow. Um, w which is, you know, it's kind of awesome, right? You could, yeah. it, maybe that, that extra money moves the needle a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, we help a lot of people in New York State. Um, you know, if you go upstate, you can get, you know, New York State overall, the state credit is 30%. Yeah. But if you go upstate, you can get 40% on the labor. Um, you know, and that's substantial. Yes. And I think I think it's 45% on the post-production if you do it upstate. So, you know, and, and you, you still can work anywhere else in the state that you want, but you might be able to actually boost yeah. the credit you're earning in New York if you think outside of New York City. Nice. That's yeah. a great idea. I mean, we do, that, we do that all over the world. We help people recognize that there are regional incentives in addition to state incentives or federal incentives in, in a lot of different places. So I'm going to ask you something that you can decide to answer it or <laughs> not. Which are the three countries that you think have the best production incentive and why? I, so let's not overlook the U.S. Yeah. Right? So I have to say, I'm a huge fan of the New York credit. Yeah, I know. Okay? It's great. Yeah, it's great credit. So, and I was there from the very beginning yeah. and, and helped design it. So I'm very proud of it. Yeah. And I think it's one of the best credits. Um, and why? I, for a number of reasons. I, there's certainty around the program. Right, we know that it's it's around for a long time. We know when it's going to sunset. There's a history in New York State of when we're two or three years, even sometimes more, away from the sunset date. People in Albany start talking about renewing it, right? Because people in production, they do their planning couple years in advance, yeah. right? Especially a TV series. Mm -hmm. You know, TV series will, will plan their, their season, you know, 18 months in advance. And the last thing a TV series wants to do is shoot a season, get all situated, and then realize, oh my gosh, we have to move. Mm -hmm. We have to go to a different state because there's no credit next year, right? So, and New York has a lot of television business. So, so we We've learned that New York ha always addresses the sunset date in, in enough time so that it's renewed mm -hmm. before it runs out, right? right. So, so that people don't, doesn't have right. to Right, so there's certainty around that. There's also a real infrastructure, mm -hmm. right? So everybody knows what they're doing. The program is solid. Um, people that, mo that manage the program know what they're doing. And there's a, there's a real structure to everything um, and an infrastructure within the state. So um, there's, no, there's no question about um, or, or fuzzy gray areas around mm -hmm. the program and how it works. It's, it's pretty solid. Um, I would say the same thing about the UK. Okay. Yeah, I would say that that program is is really solid. It's been around for a long time. It's well managed. Um, the, there's no shortage of funds. You don't have to worry about them running out of money. And what is their percentage in the UK? Tw it's 25% tw 20, up uh -huh. to 80% of your budget. 80? Uh, for up to 80% of your budget. Wow. For what, what you spend on the ground in the UK. So. Yeah. So you could have up to 80% of the film could be eligible expenditure. I mean, if you spent 100% of the budget on the ground in the UK, you're still only going to get 25% of 80% of what you spent. Yeah. Um, but it's a solid program. There's no question about it. There's no fuzziness around it. It's well managed and a real, real good infrastructure. I think Australia is the same way. 
Mm. Um, the Australia and New Zealand are solid programs. They've been around for a long time. There's, there's absolute certainty around money being available, and there's absolute certainty around um, the rules and regulations and what counts and what doesn't. And you, you can get, your, get all of your questions answered quickly. Nice. Um, but there's, you know, there are lots of other places. I mean, we like the Columbia credit. Yeah, I heard of that one. That it, they're even giving out money for short films. You yeah, know, to, I was like, that yeah, sounds they, interesting. Yeah, I mean, there are there are lots of places. I mean, and we've yeah. EP has helped a lot of jurisdictions to not only design their programs but design the rules around how how to manage it. Yeah. You know, so so we feel comfortable in a lot of places around the world, and and you can. Uh, and we, we also monitor them mm -hmm. daily. So if you go to our website, mm -hmm. um, if you go to epfinancialsolutions.com, you'll immediately, the map will pull up, um, w map of the world, and you can just, you can click on any state, any country. You can do a comparison between states and countries. Um, and we, we keep that website up to date. So you know, you can see um, what changes have been proposed. You can see what the sunset dates are. You can see if there's a, um, an annual limit to the, or a per project limit on the amount of funds available. So all that stuff is really important in making your decision. To where to go to shoot, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, you wanna know, you know what you don't wanna do is be left at the altar. Right? Yeah. So you don't want to make a decision to go and film somewhere, go there and spend all the money, and then learn that they've capped out on the program. And there's, you know, there, there isn't enough money left in the program that year to give you the, uh, the, the award that you're entitled to. Wow, well, yeah, definitely. Um, I've seen that EP solution is more for upscale filming, but what is the, the breakout? Will you also help, does the company will also help producers that are transitioning from lower bu lower budget for, uh, to a higher budget? Oh, totally, totally. Um, I mean, we, there's no minimum or maximum. All right. Um, <coughs> we, just because we're a big company doesn't mean that we only work with big projects. Mm -hmm. We're a big company because we have so many clients to service. Um, which is great. That's only good for the producer. Um, w but but as I said, there's no minimum or maximum. We help every size production and in every medium. I mean, commercials, feature films, okay. television series, ri um, scripted or unscripted. I mean, you know, it, it really doesn't matter. We can, I mean, we can even do short films, but, but Sometimes it doesn't. It, it depends on the on the scope of the short film. I mean, mm -hmm. it's um, it's. I think people tend to be a little bit more resourceful, yeah. you know, when they're working on an on an independent short. But um, but for feature length mm -hmm. stuff, and um, and te television, you know, feature length television, we um, it doesn't matter. We can help anybody. Nice. You know. I mean, I will say that the on the loan side, mm -hmm. you know, we uh, we do, and I will I will be very honest with the producer and tell them if I think that the project is too small to finance, I'm still willing to do it, and we're still willing to help. I just think if if a project is too small and the credit that you're lending against is too small, it becomes expensive, right? I mean, if you're the the, and I, I try to explain it this way. The legal fees will be the legal fees, whatever the size of the credit is, right? So whether you have a $10,000 loan or a $10 million loan, the legal fees are going to be the same. Mm -hmm. And if the legal fees uh, are eat too much into the credit, yeah. you're not going to have a whole lot of cash left over to use for production, right? So. You want to make sure that the size loan you're getting can at least cover the the transaction costs 
to do the loan. And I always explain that to people when I'm working with them. And I show them the numbers, and I show them the value of what they're getting so that they can make an informed decision themselves. Thank you. Um, I will say one more question about, I feel that sometimes that I see a lot of producers and like startup producers that they don't put enough time to create a budget. What will be the best recommendation that you will give to them? For creating a budget? Yes. Uh, honestly, it's working with, well, the, the rates, you'll mm -hmm. get the rates from the payroll company, right? So we have this thing called the Paymaster, mm -hmm. and it's a book of rates, up-to-date rates, crew rates, right, for union personnel. Great. Um, so that you can see what you should be budgeting if you're going to do a union project. If, if it's a non-union project, then it's a negotiation, mm -hmm. right, with the crew member or the cast member. Um, and the, the, the two best resources are, are budgets and schedules that have been used on similar projects and or an experienced line producer or production manager that can work with you, partner with you, to help you properly budget the film. I mean, they, they, there are lots of producers and line producers and production managers out there that they do that for a living. You know, that's what they do. They, you know, they, they, I, I'm not going to say they do it for free, no. right? But, you know, what a gift if you are able to find a seasoned production manager or line producer and bring them onto your project. I mean, they may be willing to do a budget and a schedule for you in the hopes that you'll hire them mm -hmm. to be the production manager on your project, right? And now you, you know, you, you've, you, now you've, you've achieved two things. You have a proper budget and schedule and you have experienced crew or production management on your project. Yeah, which is, I think it's very needed in order to succeed. Um, it is, you know, it's not, you know, it's, there's nothing wrong with asking for help, right? Yeah. And there's, there's everything right about aligning yourself with people that have experience, that know what they're doing, and um, can, can really help you set yourself up to succeed. Yeah. Right, we surround everyone. Surra you know, ev we all try to surround ourselves with, with, with good people that are experienced, that are smart, that, you know, that have um, been through the trenches, right? That have yeah. experience that's going to be relevant and helpful. Um, there is there anything else that you'd like to say about your company? Yeah, you know, I, um, you know, I worked for studios for many years. Yeah. And and then I worked for myself mm -hmm. for many years. And uh, you know, I and I loved working for myself. <laughs> but I always said I would never go and work for a big company again unless I loved the company, I believed in the company, I believed in the management and liked the management mm -hmm. and um and really believed in the product. And I feel all that about EP. So I think um, I think it's it speaks really well for the company because I had made a commitment to myself that those were the criteria that had to happen if I was going to go work for for a big company again. So I'm and I'm really happy I did. Nice. Really happy I made that decision. Well, thank you so much it's for my joining us.